let's let's start from the beginning. Uh, you actually grew up in South Africa. I did. But that's not where your family is from. So tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. So I was born in South Africa. Um, my dad, when he lived in Rwanda, he worked uh, for the government and he was also in the war for the genocide. Um, he was uh, an RPF member. Mm -hmm. So he was the Tutsis, the like rescued everyone kind of, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, the genocide was a, between the Hutus and the Tutsis and mm -hmm. he was on the Tutsi army um, and he also worked in the government. So after the war, he was able to move my family to South Africa so that we can grow up there and have a lovely home and everything and be away from kind of turmoil and any kind of leftovers from the war. Right, okay, so tell us a little bit about your actual family in Rwanda because you come from like an aristocratic background, is that right? I do. So my, uh, I'm a descendant of kings and queens and everything. And there's a lot of descendants, but um, af during 1959 or so, um, the Rwandan Tutsis were exiled from Rwanda and the monarch like fell apart. That's mm -hmm. when the king was exiled. And so my parents, parents grew up during that time so they had to flee Rwanda and they moved to Uganda and my dad and my mom grew up in refugee camps and stuff so they didn't get to enjoy their country necessarily anymore um, so uh, as refugees they they suffered a lot yeah yeah I can imagine um, when they got exiled uh, there was like a civil war that happened and my great-grandma um, she was thrown in like a latrine like a hole in the ground where you go potty <laughs> and she she died a horrible death um, oh my god yeah so the rest of my family was just lucky to get out of that wow this yeah. is your great grandmother mm -hmm. she was murdered and it was terrible but it, it was between the hutus and the tutsis so the tutsi when rwanda was founded were the monarch like the royalty people right and the hutus were like farmers and agriculture and stuff mm -hmm. And until the Belgians came, there was no identification for that, you know? It wasn't like, you're a Hutu because your ID card says that. Mm -hmm. So when the Belgians came, they um, enforced this ID thing, and it really caused a lot of turmoil and led to civil wars and, and the genocide eventually. So they kind of wanted to categorize everybody, yeah. I would imagine, in a way to right. be able to conquer and mm -hmm. rule them as... so like the tutsis were described as tall with long thin noses and uh, the tutsis were described as shorter with like flatter nose and um, wait the hutu which one the hutus, the hutus yeah were the the farmers and stuff so the tutsis were the royalty and stuff right and they had the long thin noses mm -hmm. and the tallness like, and the tallness they can be up to seven feet tall wow <laughs> as a tutsi and there's a picture from like 1961 of like the belgians coming mm -hmm. and there's the tutsi men the kings and queens and they're just like this tall and the belgians are like right next to them wow. but they're so tiny and they kind of favored the Tutsis when they came to Rwanda and was it because they were because they were the ruling class at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that caused a lot of like hatred and racism within its our own country. Right. And that led to the Hutus like exiling a bunch of Tutsis, about 300,000 people were kicked okay. out in the 60s. Wow. And my parents grew up in that time. So it was kind of like the the underclass, which is what mm -hmm. the Hutus had been made, yep. like overthrowing the yes. bourgeoisie. Like, right, and know. they kicked them out. Now they're, then they were in power for about 10 years or something. Mm -hmm. And the genocide started when the Hutu president, um, I think he was trying to do a deal. I Don't quote me on this, but they were trying to have a balance within the government with Tutsis and Hutus. Mm -hmm. you know? So he signed an agreement, I believe, or something to join these two people and then his sh his plane got shot down and he was with the the Burundi president as well and that's what kicked off the genocide of 94 is the plane crash and they blame it on Tutsis or Hutu extremists like it's unclear who shot the plane down but right. it definitely kick-started the war and Hutus because there was like a power vacuum mm -hmm. right and so they were on the radio and stuff doing all kind of propaganda and tv and stuff like you should go kill all the Tutsis they're the reason for your problems mm -hmm. they just shot down the president like go murder them now 
and about 800,000 people were killed in like six weeks. Neighbors just started murdering people. Like if your neighbor's a Hutu and they know you're a Tutsi, they would just come in with machetes and just murder your whole family. So it wasn't just like the government coming after people. It was right. like people everyone you know together. would just murder you. So wow. There's a lot of horrible, horrible stories. And the church sometimes would lie to people like, uh, the priest would be like a Hutu, right? Mm -hmm. And he would get a bribe from the extremists. Like, you get as many Tutsis in this church as you can, and they put grenades in there and just blow them all up. As under false pretenses, like, we're going to save you, come to the church, we'll rescue all the Tutsis, and then you get murdered. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty awful stuff. Yeah. And so, I, so your father was able to escape. Sounds like your great grandmother did not. No, she did not. Um, but your grandmother and your grandfather mm -hmm. did with your yep. with your father, and then your mother went through the same. She went through the exact same thing. They were actually like family friends at the time. Okay. So they kind of grew up knowing each other. Okay. And my dad was a little bit older than my mom, and they were, fell madly in love. And um, during the war, my dad was actually in the army to try to get Rwanda back. Because there was a, a a political party called the RPF, mm -hmm. and they were founded by the Tutsis that were e exiled in the 60s mm -hmm. um, to come back and take Rwanda back, you know? Mm -hmm. And my dad was part of that. Um, so he saw a lot of awful things. <laughs> yeah, I but, can imagine. Um, uh, the RPF eventually won the war, and so the leader of the RPF Kagame he's mm -hmm. the president to this day okay so they they kind of won and rescued Rwanda <laughs> yeah yeah so what is what is the political climate like now there it is good um because your country has back bounced there, right yes he's back there he retired from his job in the government and um the country as a whole is about forgiveness you know I've never seen a group of people go through so much hatred and turmoil and then turn around and hold hands with everyone and just be like let's never let this happen again mm -hmm. and let's move on as a country and try to be better and economically they're just developing like crazy like it's a really lo lovely country it's one of the cleanest countries in africa there's gorgeous hotels and resorts and mountain gorillas if you like those you can go to a resort and spend time with them alongside them and that's something I've always wanted to do. So wow. maybe I'll maybe I'll go back for that. Wow. <laughs> so you would recommend that like people oh, yeah. visit Rwanda. Big time. It's gorgeous. The hotels are pristine. They've just made like a whole um like movement to for, for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And these people that did the genocide and stuff, like they're they will have meetings between the families that they murdered and the murderers, and they will come and apologize and have like public apologies. And it's so emotional. Wow. <laughs> like it's really incredible. And they really come and some people forgive them, some people mm -hmm. don't forgive them, but yeah. it's about the effort right. as a nation. Yeah. I mean, we, we definitely shy away from like political conversations on this show just because yeah. that's generally not what people are here for. But I mean, you know, we can't ignore what's going on in Israel and exactly. in Gaza right now. Yep. So when you see that and people are like calling it a genocide, yep. um, how does that make you feel knowing what your family went through? It, it's devastating because I know it's been like a long war between Israel and uh, Palestine mm -hmm. for like a long, long, long time. Yeah. And it just breaks my heart because there is so much love to be had in the world but a lot of times people choose to hate and it i think it roots from ignorance you know mm -hmm. if we could just all be a little bit more kinder to each other and consider it that we're just human beings then you won't have such awful things but that's you know like cartoon world <laughs> yeah <laughs> nothing really happens that way and people do have conflict and it's yeah. just heartbreaking Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. 
As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.